My 2021 lockdown hair is getting worse, but at least the laptops are getting better. Today I've got the Lenovo Yoga 9i, a premium laptop from Lenovo, which is taking the fight to the Dell XPS 13 and the HP Spectre X360 2-in-1s. And my review, well, it's coming right up. Let's go. What's up guys, I'm Phil, this is Phil and You In, a channel where I like to talk about the latest and greatest tech from the perspective of the people who are actually buying this stuff, and well, that's you. So if you haven't already, please go and hit that subscribe button, and if you end up liking what you've seen today, remember to hit that like button at the end of the video. Let's start by talking about the specs on this thing. This review unit I've got right here has been shipped with an Intel i7-1185 G7, which has got 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage, and it comes with a 1080p display. The price for this thing as tested is about £1,400, $1,600, which definitely puts it in the premium category. But perhaps the most important thing to note is it does price it below some of its nearest competitors in the two-in-one space, such as the XPS 13 and such as the Spectre X360. So as I said, Lenovo have definitely positioned this as a premium device, and it certainly feels that way. It's machined aluminium all over. It means it comes in at only about 1.35 kilos, so definitely in the same territory as those other devices. Feels really good to hold. It looks every bit as good as the Dell XPS 13 and the HP Spectre. In practice, it's probably just missing some of those fancier finishing touches like those kind of diamond cut edges on the HP Spectre or the carbon fiber keyboard deck that you get with the XPS 13. But Lenovo have done a you know, cracking job in terms of build quality. Now, this wouldn't be a laptop review test if we didn't do the completely arbitrary and yet also completely pointless one finger lift test. So let's see how we do. Oh it's good. Keyboard wise, well, it's Lenovo, so I think we'd expect them to produce good keyboards, and this one's no exception. The keys have some really nice travel to them, albeit they're perhaps not as tactile as some other laptops I've used before, so getting up to speed wasn't the best, but at the same time, it was absolutely far from the worst. There's very few people, I think, who could reasonably complain about the quality of this keyboard. The trackpad is pretty large relative to the size of the laptop itself, which is good to see. It's nice and accurate, easy to use, full array of Windows precision gestures as well. The screen that's been shipped with this thing is a 1080p display, so there is a 4K option. This has got 400 nits of peak brightness, so not quite as good as some other premium laptops in the market, which are typically coming in about 500 nits. So I generally aim, particularly when testing devices, to stay in at around 50 to 60%. There were times when I had to push this to about 70. When I am using it, there's good anti-glare on the screen, didn't suffer from any real reflections at all. If I was to signal out one main drawback about the display, and probably the main drawback for the laptop in my opinion, because it's really good overall, is that we've only got a 16 by nine rather than 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So in effect, all that means is you're losing that little bit extra of vertical headroom that we're seeing as standard on most premium laptops. Now, if you've never used the 16 by 10, if you've only used 16 by nine, well, you're not gonna care. But once you've used 16 by 10, it's really hard to take that step back, particularly when we look at the bezels and we can see that the side and tops are lovely and thin but the bottom is actually quite thick. So it's a little bit of a shame that Lenovo didn't manage to make the use of that space down there to put a bigger and better display in. Now, unlike some two-in-one manufacturers, Lenovo actually shipped this thing with a pen. And what's more, they've actually gone to the design and engineering effort to provide a housing for the pen to be stored in, reducing the chance of your actual ability to lose it. It's not a perfect implementation though. So the actual housing is on the reverse side of the laptop rather than on the side. And to top it off, when the laptop screen is actually open, it's actually quite difficult to get your, actually it's not just difficult, I'd actually say it's borderline impossible to actually get your finger in there and pop the thing out, which means you can actually invert your thumb to pop it out. Now, if that's not a first world problem, I don't know what is, but hell, there's always got to be room for improvement, and that's one area. Now, I am far from the world's foremost expert when it comes to kind of digital artwork on a two-in-one device, but in terms of the accuracy of the pen, it feels smart and intuitive, at least good enough for note-taking. Latency seems to be all about there, no real delay. So yeah, absolutely no complaints, certainly good for general kind of business, day-to-day -day work. All in all, if you're after a two-in-one device to use for casual artwork or casual notation, you're gonna have zero complaints when using this two-in-one. Let's talk about ports. So on the right-hand side, we have absolutely nothing, just the power button. On the left-hand side, we have ourselves a headphone jack, two USB-C, Thunderbolt 4 ports. So it's a bit disappointing, Lenovo, 
couldn't squeeze one of those onto the right hand side it's always preferable to have one on each side that way depending on where your power outlet is plugged into you don't have to be draping cables around the back and an increasingly dying breed and something we've seen disappear on most other premium laptops in the market is a usb type a port so lenovo haven't completely surrendered to that idea yet which is brilliant will help you dodge having to kind of live that dongle life until usb-c becomes the de facto standard battery wise i bloody love this thing so it's got a 60 watt hour battery and i found it netted me about nine hours of battery life which is a good two three hours better than some of its other premium competitors in the market where by way of reminder my daily workflow is typically based on my corporate work so that's kind of connected via a citrix virtual desktop for the bulkier part of the day and then the evening doing things like script writing a bit of casual video editing and the like so generally speaking yeah you should be able to get a solid day's work out of this thing which is always preferable nobody really wants to plug it in during the day if they can otherwise avoid it so let's talk speakers and oh boy am i continuously disappointed by laptop speakers but not this time because Lenovo have done a fantastic job. The sound quality on this is up there with the best laptops I've ever heard. Now what Lenovo have done is actually built the speakers into the hinge mechanism itself, but it's not just a hinge mechanism, it also acts as a soundbar. Now you may have seen that some other laptops before, and yeah, that's all well and good, but what Lenovo have done really well is actually designed and angled the soundbar in such a way that the actual the direction of the speakers remains sort of front facing, which means whether you're using this in laptop mode, in tent mode, or in full on tablet mode, the sound quality doesn't take any dip depending on which view you're using it in. So many laptop manufacturers just sacrifice sound quality as a default these days. It's really nice to see Lenovo giving it the care, love and attention that sound deserves. Now the Lenovo Yoga 9i comes with a 720p webcam included. This is the webcam in action. I've turned the studio lights off so you get a better idea of what it's like under real kind of room lighting. As you'd expect with a 720p camera, things feel a little bit grainy. Everything feels a bit overexposed. Uh, but at least as far as the microphone goes, in terms of when you're doing Zoom calls, Teams calls, things like that, at least the microphone quality is okay, better than I've used on some laptops. Now, unfortunately, the webcam doesn't have Windows Hello facial recognition, but we do get ourselves a fingerprint reader. And for those who are really security conscious, the webcam also has a digital privacy shutter as well. Stop those feds hacking into your webcam, seeing your leaked gaming skills. In terms of temperatures, when this thing's under low, the keyboard deck stays nice and cool. Absolutely no complaints at all. The underside of the device, though, does get hot, so you wouldn't want to be using this on your lap if you're doing anything particularly intensive let's say like rendering or gaming but if you're using this on a tabletop well you're never going to notice in terms of fan noise Lenovo have configured this really nicely so they definitely spin up to the point where they're noticeable but not to the extent where I would call it distracting if you want a thin and light laptop and you want it to perform you're going to have to accept some degree of noise so obviously we can't talk about how this thing sounds and feels when it's under load without talking about its performance under load and generally speaking this thing does a really good job across the board the Yoga 9i performs really well in Cinebench we can see cracking performance scores on multi-core with a bit of a drop off compared to some of its competitors in single core workloads. It didn't maintain its chart topping position in Geekbench multi-core tests but still an admirable effort but once again we have seen a little bit of a drop off in its single core performance relative to some of its competitors. Now on the graphics front Lenovo don't provide any option for a discrete graphics card here so you're stuck with Intel's Iris XD graphics. I say stuck, Intel have actually done an amazing job with their 11th gen chipset graphics which is a huge step up over and above prior generation to the point where even seeing this thing start to beat out discrete graphics cards of only two three four years ago and what we found in Geekbench in both OpenCL and Vulkan test is that it performs largely on par with its other competitors and the same can be said of the suite of Luxmark tests as well now just because the Iris XE graphics chipset in this thing is pretty good compared to the last generation don't let that fool you into thinking this thing is going to have any chance of playing AAA titles on anything resembling an acceptable frame rate it just simply won't but if you're interested in older games or esports titles you should find that on the lower end of the settings this thing happily operates in around 50 frames per second which is perfectly suitable for a casual gamer in conclusion i really like the yoga 9i it feels premium it feels every bit as premium as some of its competitors in the market it is light its speakers are incredible the touchscreen is good to use the battery life is brilliant it's not perfect as i say it's disappointing not to have a 16 by 10 aspect ratio it'd be good to get 500 rather than 400 nits of peak brightness out of it and i feel like 
the uh, pen housing could do with a little bit of a rethink. So those are all things I think we'd hope to see improvements on in Lenovo's next iteration of this. But when we consider that Lenovo have cleverly priced this cheaper than its nearest premium competitors in the market, then, well, if you're in the market for a premium two-in-one laptop, then this thing should absolutely go on your shortlist before you make a purchasing decision. And that's all she wrote, folks. If you've enjoyed what you've been watching today, remember to hit that like button. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.